today we take it to the Republic of Truvasha in central Russia. It's one of the country's smallest republics but still has a population of over 1.3 million people. And it's a mainly rural region but also a model for social welfare programs which bigger cities would be envious of. And let's find out more about them with RT Stacey Bivens. Stacey, hello there. So this is one of your first visits to Russia's regions and you spent two weeks there now. Uh -huh. So what are your impressions so far? You know, the Closa team and I have all enjoyed our two weeks here, and I can't believe it's, it's over. We've been able to enjoy the culture through dance, through music, through theater, beer, and in a first for me, beer theater. It's amazing to me how warm and hospitable people can be here, especially in the face of an economic crisis. And the region is working hard to improve the quality of life for people here through special grants provided through the federal government. Take a look now at what the Close Up team and I found. Looking at two-year-old Ramanez, you'd never know that his life began under extreme medical conditions. I was really scared when I saw him for the first time. I didn't know how to handle such a premature baby. It was very difficult for me at first. He weighed less than two pounds and couldn't breathe on his own. Mother and baby were treated at the State Institute of Health Care. The prenatal center is part of a federal program to bring European medical practices to more parts of Russia. Chavashi is able to offer services here free of charge through a grant. The Republic often applies for and receives federal funding in the hopes of improving the quality of life. This is the area's only center of its kind. Thanks to advances in modern medicine here, Chavashi has been able to do something that many parts of Russia hasn't been able to do, cut the mortality rate. At one point, most of the babies who were born prematurely and underweight didn't make it. But now, more than 80 percent do. Where medicine has limits, some in the community step in. Nine-year-old Lena has cerebral palsy. Because finding acceptance and accessibility for Russia's disabled can be difficult, the Chuvash Puppet Theater brings the show to them. Yuri Filipov is the company's art director and one of its actors. He says educating disabled children through theater is his most fulfilling role. I think that what nature did not give them, then at least we can give them something. We are not just there to entertain. We can also help them. Yuri and the company puts on private performances for free. It's a financial break Lena's mom desperately needs. Olga is an unemployed single parent raising Lena on disability payments. Lena enjoys guests. She looks forward to seeing the fairy tale. And I am thankful that they established this project, and we hope that they will continue visiting us. Chavashi is working to better serve disabled adults, too. But as it is in most parts of Russia, progress is slow. Most of the buildings and pathways aren't handicapped accessible. It's kind of difficult to get in a stall because there are so many steps. Sometimes, even if you want to get in, you can't. Yuri Stepanov suffered from an accident that left him unable to walk. It took a while, but he found a way to recover from his depression. After I suffered from trauma, I was laying in bed for a year and a half at home, and I was thinking about having to use a wheelchair, so I decided to get involved with handicapped sports. That decision eventually led him to the Youth Sports Center. Here, people with various disabilities meet, play sports, and develop their agility. Yuri excelled at badminton and eventually turned pro. I've been playing badminton for six years, and I can say that I'm the first handicapped person to play it professionally in Russia. He's a four-time champion in Russia and has won a silver medal at the Eurocap. Yuri's participation in sports has opened up the world to him. He hopes his success will inspire younger people with disabilities. He's grateful for the strides government is making to improve the lives of the handicap, but he says there's still work to be done. And part of improving the social sphere here is improving education. And joining me now is a teacher. Her name is Natalia Generolova. She's a high school teacher. So tell me what kinds of things are being done to prepare kids for the future. Well, my guess is that both the people living and the government do whatever they can to make schools better. Of course, you can, if you have visited schools, you could see the new equipment which is being installed at schools. Well, different things, not only equipment, furniture, sporting facilities, and all those high-tech things, well, are supposed to make uh, the process of education 
more modern, so to say. And uh, uh, all th these things help children be exposed to all those high-tech things they will face after they leave school. I should also uh, like to thank those parents who are so eager to help mm -hmm. their kids, and they love their kids, and they're ready to give the time, the effort, in order to make everything possible for their school to be better. So I can say thank you to the parents I work with. And thank you very much. Thank you. That's, that's good. And it really is a, one of the things I loved about being here is that you do feel the sense of community that, that exists and the hospitality and the warmness. Um, so that's it for us. The two weeks are over, and uh, well, we were happy to be here. We're happy to share what we learned and what we found with you. And if you missed any of it, don't worry. You can find it online. It's at our website. That's at rt.com. Thank you very much indeed, Stacey. And we're waiting for you here in 